Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Project. In this module, I want to show you how we can use the timeline. So before I do that, I'm going to create some tasks. I'm just going to call this Project A, and then I'll do a few subtasks. Phase one, phase two, phase three, and just go for phase four. Phase four. Now you've got the timeline usually by default on the top of the Gantt chart. You can knock that off in options if you don't want that. Before I do that, let me just do some indents here. Let's go back to task, task tab, do some indents. I'll put some durations in. So I'll just go for two, three, two, four. And let's just link these up. I'll just do a, a very rudimentary link. The chain link tool up there. So they're all linked. And let's just display them, the labels on the Gantt chart itself. Go into text and just type in name there. OK to that. So that'll put the names on the Gantt chart. Now I want to have a look at the timeline. And I'm going up to this little tool here. And down the bottom there, you've got timeline, and it will give you the timeline. So the tab that appears for the timeline is this one. This allows you to format that timeline. So you've got some tasks. It says there, look, existing tasks. So you can click on these and basically tick whichever one you want. So if I tick phase one, OK, phase one appears on this timeline. Now, the scale for the timeline is set through this option. If we go into there, you can, it's using the default uh, times at the minute, but you can actually set this here, selecting a date if you want. I'll leave it on that one. I'll just click OK. I just thought I'd show you that. Let's click on existing tasks. And I'll go for phase two. I'm clicking OK. Puts phase two there. There's a duration of it. Now you've got an option to have a second timeline so you can add see this two with a little plus if I click on that it just gives me another timeline but I don't want it to be that long the same length as this one so this is going up to the end of November um, let me just add change the date range on this one so if I'll go into there select this option so I'll start with today's date which is the 30th of October and then go forward into say let's go into December let's go for the 31st of December okay to that so this one is now not picking that up so what you've got here if I click on this timeline so this is active you can if there's a task that fits in that timeline I'll go for phase three see where that puts that it might extend the thing let's put it there so that's okay that worked now, if I keep that one active and just add phase four, in fact, undo that one, I didn't mean to do that, Oop, add phase four, like so, let's put that in there. Now, you can change the color of these timelines. If I go up to the top here and select a color, you can see that that will color the, the timelines like so. You've also got the option to add extra tasks if you so wish. So that is existing tasks. This is a task that is, doesn't exist. So I'll go for the 25th of November on this one. I've got this one clicked. So new task, completely new task this will be. And then you just type it in as you would in a normal Gantt chart, either in the task information box or straight on the screen. So I'll go phase five. And I'll go for the 25th of November. OK to that. And then that sits there like that. It's extended this one. So I want to reduce this one back down to what it was. So I'll go back into that. So I don't want this to be growing as it is. So I'll go for today's date and then change that to the 18th of November so it stays in that sort of date range area like that 
so it goes back. You've also got the option to add milestones, add call out tasks. It's just totally up to you how you want to do this. This is, um, I'll call this end of phases. And that can go, let's go for 1st of December, 2nd of December. Okay. So that's put that there. Now I can pull this and move it up or down, position it wherever I want. If I've got lots of different milestones or tasks, the thing, can, the thing can get quite cluttered. If I go back up to it and do a call out task, I'll call this phase six, and then you'll see how this one works. So this will be phase six. And I'll get this one to start on the 1st of December, 2nd of December. And you see that's a call out as well. You can move that one up. Now this one, you can pull off and have these doing the same sort of thing. So you don't have to have the bars on there like that. You can just maneuver them yourself. It's totally up to you. If the, the timeline's getting too cluttered, that's probably what you would have to do. Now, the other thing you've got on there, you've got bar labels. So these are two bars. Now, you can see this bar's gone really small because I've um, pulled off the actual the task. So if I go on there and just um, keep that one active and just create a new task, I'll call it phase seven for argument's sake, even though it's going before phase six, doesn't matter. Phase seven, and we'll have this in the first week of November. So let's go for the 4th of November. It's a one day task. And then that makes that bar fill out again, if you like. So it's totally up to you how you want that to be. Um, let's change the color again, a bit more color to it. Now you've got this bar label option there. So if I click on that top bar and click on bar label, I'm going to call that main and bar two, I'm going to call that sub. And that'll just sit in front of the, the two bars that you can see there like so. So it's totally up to you how you want to do this, how you want to format this. Um, you can copy this if you so wish. You know, you can send it via email or just copy it. What you've created here, though, is going to be sitting on the Gantt chart. If I go back up to the Gantt chart, if you've got it, if you've got it active on the Gantt chart, if I go view and just tick that, you see now it's taking up quite a bit of screen space because of that. That's why quite often people don't have it above the Gantt chart. That one might get it. Online. like so so colors are up to you however you want to change the colors you can do so through that um, if you want another bar you can, there's no restriction on how many bars you have but obviously each time you do a bar you are going to get this even more cluttered than before it's totally up to you though it's useful i think for an overview of your project main milestones or main checkpoints useful to share with people but i don't use it on top of the gantt chart for that reason so hopefully this video is of use thank you for your time i'll catch you on the next one